An example is really kind of their example again, that they, an example that uh, on the face of it does not make sense, but once you see the solution, you'll see why I decided to bring it. So let's prove that uh, the limit of as x approaches 3 of x squared equals 9. And you can see the difference, the, the, the why, why I was hesitating a little bit, because this one I can do direct substitution and say, well, I can evaluate it for 9. But, but let's do the former part. Remember, I need to find suitable uh, delta first. So uh, given epsilon greater than 0, we need to find a, a suitable delta. We need to find delta such that Uh, if the absolute value of x minus uh, 3 in this case is greater than 0 but less than delta, then the absolute value of x squared minus 9 is less than that particular epsilon. Okay? The process starts by looking at the right inequality, working back until you get the left inequality. So we start with the absolute value of x squared minus 9, less than epsilon, and we break it down to x squared minus 9 is x minus 3 times x plus 3. Okay? And now I'll break it down to x minus 3 times x plus 3, like so, and we want it to be less than epsilon. Now, if you look at, remember, what we want to do, we want the absolute value of x minus 3, and we have it here, but we have an excess baggage with x plus 3. Okay? So, <coughs> so uh, we have x minus 3, the absolute value, is less than epsilon divided by the absolute value of x plus 3. And what I'm saying is I need to find a value for the absolute value of x plus 3. So I'll have a value on the right side of the inequality. So I'm going to let x plus 3 equal some constant c. So let's the absolute value of x plus 3 equal e, c some constant. Okay? Now, then, therefore, the absolute value of x minus 3 is now less than epsilon divided by c, and we call it, we'll call this delta. So, and this is the reason I brought this exercise, because you may have something like that, where you need to decide what the heck to do with C, okay? And I'll call this, uh, let's call this delta 1. Now, I have another condition on C, x plus 3. Now, I'm thinking about, I'm looking at x plus 3. Remember, we look at x plus 3 when x goes to 3. So I'm thinking, um, what value of C are possible? If x approaches 3, right? I'm thinking, hmm, if x is approaches 3, then I'll have 6. So I'm going to be, I want to be on the safe side, okay? So I'm going to say that x can approach, can be as low as 2, can large as 4, right? And therefore, C will be a number between 5 and 7. Does it make sense? And it's pretty safe. I mean, I can go be a little, I can finesse it more. I can say that X can be as small as 2.9 and as large as 3.1. But now I'm getting into inconvenient numbers. So I'm going to keep it as a whole number. And I'm going to say that X plus 3... So we consider x to be a number between 2 and 4, right? 
So we choose it because this is close enough. Two, three. Remember, because x uh, goes to x approaches three. So how are we going to deal with this? Um, remember, I need c here to come up with the delta. So here we go. We're going to work on this condition, and we're going to say that I'm going to look at this uh, in compound inequality, and I'm going to subtract three from the compound inequality x is greater than 2 but less than 4. Why is that? Because remember, we want a condition for x minus 3. Okay, Because that's what delta is. So I'm looking at, uh, I'm sorry, instead of subtract, I'm going to add. No, I subtract. I got it right. So I'm looking at uh, no. I'm going to add. I'm I'm sorry. I was right. I'm going to add because I want x plus three. My bad. So it will be five is great less than x plus three less than seven. Okay. Now of the two, because I have delta over C, and I want to have the greatest restrictions, then delta over 7 is more is smaller than delta over, over 5, right? <clears throat> so I'll choose C equals 5. I'm going to pick up this inequality, so we'll choose c equals x plus 3 equals 7 because epsilon divided by c equals epsilon over 7 is smaller than epsilon divided by 5. Okay, We want to have, we want something less than the other, so we want to pick up the uh, We want to to restrict our condition rather than so now we have uh, we have another condition on x minus three. This will give us one condition. Uh, so x minus three is less than epsilon over seven. Okay, now. Let's subtract 3 from this inequality that we have x is greater than 2 and less than 4. Remember, I, I want to start with, with it, but I decide to first add. And then if you subtract and you get x minus 3 is less than 1 or greater than negative 1 or the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 1. So we have two conditions. We have this one and we have this one. We call this delta 1, we called it already, and we call this delta 2. So delta 1 equals epsilon over 7 and delta 2 equals 1. And what we need to do, we need to choose the smallest of the two. So delta will be the minimum of delta 1 comma delta 2 or equal minimum of uh, epsilon over 7 or 1. Now, until we know what epsilon, we cannot choose which one, but normally epsilon will be a small number such as 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 or something like that. So with all likelihood, epsilon over 7 will be our limit. Okay, so how is to complete the proof now? 
Okay. Um, we let epsilon be some positive number, and we let delta to be the minimum of the two, of one, or, I'm sorry, epsilon over seven, comma one. Okay. Then we're going to say that if x minus uh, three is positive but less than delta, then start with if delta equals 1, <coughs> then x minus 3 is less than 1, and we're going to write it as x minus 3 is less than 1, greater than negative 1. We're going to add uh, 3 to both sides, so these follow that x by itself is greater than 2 but less than 4, and these follow that if we had 3, x plus 3 is greater than 5 but less than 7, right? Or we're going to write that the absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 7. Okay? Also, this was if, if uh, delta equal, uh, equals 1. Now, also, if delta equals epsilon over 7, then the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 7. In this case, we just uh, multiply by x plus 3, both sides. So we're going to say the absolute value of x plus x minus 3 times the absolute value of x plus 7 is less than, here we have epsilon over 7, but we have 7 for x plus 3. You see, because, I'm sorry, x plus 3 here, so we added this one, and this one is less than 7, so we have that part, and this equals delta by itself. And now, in, on the left side, we have x squared minus 9, and on the right side, we have epsilon. And that's pretty much conclude. So... So we conclude the formal part. So again, we use the both deltas to say if delta equals 1, we came up with x plus 3 less than 7. If delta equals de uh, epsilon over 7, we came up with x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 7. We multiply each other to get the x squared minus 9. So we need to multiply epsilon over 7 by 7 to get epsilon. So that's the trick that involves when you have to factor. Oh, and uh, this is a, a little bit, this is a higher level of difficulty, uh, but I needed to show you uh, this particular example as well.